This is how Quen trains its reasoning models to match performance of DeepSea Car 1 and O3. I spent 9 hours preparing this video and you will understand everything. So you will understand both GRPO by DeepSeq R1 and GSPO by Quen because they are very similar. First we start with a question, for example, you had 10 apples and ate 2, how many apples do you have now? In reality questions would be a lot harder, but this is just so I can explain easier. So we use the base Quen model and we generate some a number of answers, let's say 3 answers in this example. And we see that 2 times answer was correct and 1 time answer was incorrect. Now we want to just copy this base model and in this copy we want to train that copy to become more likely to write these correct answers and less likely to write these wrong answers. In the beginning we have this base model that generated these answers and then we will copy that and then we will train the copy to become better at reasoning uh, using GRPO and GSPO. So both algorithms do the same thing in the beginning and I will tell you uh, when they start to diverge, diverge later. We start with this number advantage. So for incorrect tokens, advantage will be negative number. And for correct tokens, advantage will be a positive number. Later we will use this advantage to make correct answers and correct tokens more likely in the new model and incorrect tokens less likely. Advantage is not some predetermined number like plus one for correct and minus one for incorrect. Instead, we want to assign advantage in a smarter way. Remember, we have a question and we tried answering that question multiple times. So, if there is a lot of wrong answers and just a few correct answers, then we want to strongly reward those few correct answers to show the path to the AI. And we want to just slightly punish the wrong answers. So this is going to encourage exploration. So AI will not be afraid to make mistakes and it will chase these correct answers. But think of it as strongly reinforcing rare correct paths that AI found. On the other hand, if most of the answers are correct and just a few are wrong, that means AI already knows how to solve the answer. So we want to completely exterminate those few wrong answers. So we will give a big punishment for those few wrong answers. And we will just keep small rewards for the correct answers because we just want the AI to keep doing that. Think of it as now we don't want to give huge rewards for correct answers because it already has this general knowledge and if we kept giving huge rewards to some specific answers it could overfit to those answers or to those type of answers and it would even narrow the type of answers it gives. It would stop giving other correct answers. In other words, when model is struggling the priority is discovery. Amplify the rare signal of success to help model latch onto that signal. And if most answers are correct, then we just need to keep as is without too strong changes to the correct answers and we just need to uh, refine and make sure it doesn't have these wrong answers. Guys, just a bit of maths, please don't get scared. It's easy. So our goal is if we have only a few or one kind of wrong or correct answers, then we want to make the advantage for those answers very big. So in our case we had uh, two correct answers and one wrong answer. So we assign uh, one and one for correct answers in the beginning and zero for the wrong answer. And we already know that because we have just one uh, wrong answer and two correct, we want to punish this wrong answer more. So later you will see that the punishment for this wrong answer, its uh, absolute value is higher then rewards, so we get a, a bit of reward for both correct answers. So first uh, we will calculate the mean reward. And as you can see, we just add all of these and divide by the number of uh, answers. So if there is more correct answers, this mean will be closer to one and vice versa. And then standard deviation. So this will just show how on average 
these answers are away from this mean. And I recommend you watch some YouTube videos about mean and standard deviation if you don't know what it is. So standard deviation says that each of these 110 is on average 0 0.47 away from mean, uh, 0 0.67. But uh, this average distance is actually 0 0.44, not 0 0.47. This is because standard deviation has some property. Uh, if there are some numbers that are very far away from mean, then this square will stretch the distance even further. So standard deviation will actually show how far spread out uh, the numbers are from the mean more accurately than just this actual average of the distance from the mean. You can watch more videos. And before we go on, I just want to quickly challenge you to think about this. So if we have a lot of correct answers, then the mean will be closer to the correct answers, one, to the number one. Think about that. And then that means that this number will be smaller. And so we are dividing smaller number by this, this same number, so we get smaller reward. And because there is few uh, wrong answers, then mean will be away from the zero. So this will be bigger negative number. And then because we are dividing by the same number, then this will be bigger negative number. Okay, I hope that didn't bore you to death. So let's go to the second part. So we have the advantage for the correct and incorrect answers. But to calculate the reward, we also have this importance or importance ratio. But there is a problem with advantage. It assigns reward based on the correctness of the final answer. But there could be reasoning mistakes within the reasoning process, within the answer. And then even those reasoning mistakes will get assigned rewards, for example, if the final answer is correct, which is not good. For example, I had 10 apples, I ate 2, so now I have 12, final answer is 8. So now the final answer is correct, so the whole answer will get rewarded and reinforced. But we have a reasoning mistake here. So we want to deal with this somehow. So we would like to reinforce all of these tokens, but make the token 12 less likely. However, both GRPO and GSPO cannot actually make a single token less likely. They both are going to 100% make everything more likely. So for future research that maybe even you can do, you can figure out how to detect these wrong reasoning steps and make them less likely, even though the other ones you're going to make more likely. But it's not all doom and gloom. Both GRPO and GSPO can detect something wrong here. And this is where they start to diverge. So first we will understand GRPO. And then this is from R1 and then GSPO, which is even simpler. So GRPO will find out that this token is weird. So it will actually reward it less, reinforce it less than the rest of the tokens. Because it's going to think, OK, this token is weird. Maybe it's wrong. I don't want to reinforce it as much. So how does it work? As you remember, we have the old model, the frozen model that was generating these answers and the new model that we are training to become better. In the beginning, the new model was same as the old model, but now it's got better. Now it's better because we trained it and we are still training it. So this new model that's now smarter, it's going to find this token 12 less likely to be here. So for example, the old model thought that given this sequence of tokens, I had 10 apples, blah, 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 this token 12 has 40% chance to be generated next. But the new smarter model now only gives, for example, 5% chance because this 12 is not correct here. So the smarter model thinks it's less likely to be there. So if we divide the new probability with old probability, we get this confidence level of how confident the new model is that this token should be there. 
they call this importance, not confidence, or importance ratio, but let's just call it confidence, it's simpler to understand. For good tokens and correct tokens, the new model can assign even higher probability than the old model, because new model is even now more confident, more certain in these correct tokens. So this ratio will be even higher than one, because this could be 50 or 60% here if this was correct token. And then what we do is, as you remember, we have this advantage for the entire answer. It's same for every token. And then for every token separately, we have this importance ratio. It's how confident the new model is that this token should be there, that this token is good. So then we calculate update or reward for each token separately. Now remember, if the, advent if the answer is correct, advantage will be positive. So every token will be rewarded. But the weird tokens can get rewarded less. And if the advantage is negative, if the answer is wrong, then we will just have negative rewards or punishments for every token, individually scaled by the importance ratio. As I said, in the future, maybe we should punish the wrong tokens even if the answer is correct. And punishing just means changing the weights of the model so this token is less likely to generate if we have this previous sequence of tokens. Just to show you this entire text. So that was how GRPO works. And GSPO by Quen is exactly the same, there is just one difference. Instead of calculating importance ratio for every token individually, it does it for the entire answer. So it's very simple, look at this. So we have, for both of the old and the new model, we calculate the same probability. So it's probability of the first token times probability of the second token given first token times probability of the third token given second and first token, etc. So we just multiply probability for each token together to get the probability of the entire sequence. And we do that for both new model and the old model. And now we divide probability of the new model with probability of the old model to get this raw importance ratio. But there is a hidden problem here. So initial idea is to, instead of updating each token with separate importance ratio, we want to update each token with average importance ratio across the entire sequence. So Quen found that this updating works better, trains models better. So you see here that GSPO actually, training reward, it's more stable, it's faster and it's better than GRPO. But this is the issue with this formula. Let's skip, let's see this. Let's say every token is on average 10% more likely to be generated by the new model as opposed to the old model. So if we have just one token in the sequence, then the importance ratio will be 1.1, which is correct. But if we have 10 tokens in the sequence, then the importance ratio will not be 1.1 for every token. It will actually be 1.1 to the 10th, just because we multiplied our probabilities here. So now we will get this as the new average importance ratio, which it's not, it's actually 1.1 because of the multiplications. So this is widely unfair, longer sequences get exaggerated importance just because you multiplied more numbers. So we just need to take a 50th root of this to get 1.1 or 10th root of this to get 1.1, so 10%. So here in our formula, after we divide, then we need to uh, take the root of this product uh, according to the sequence length. Here you can see, just because we are using multiplication as opposed to addition, we get higher average per token, which is incorrect. So we need to take square root or not square, we need to take nth root. So GSPO will just calculate 
average times this importance for the entire sequence and then update every single token with this new uh, signal for this, with the same number. The signal number is applied uniformly to the gradients of every token in the sequence. I will just show you full text again so you can check if you want. So lastly, there is this clipping here. So imagine the new model gives 90% chance and the old model gave just 10% chance. Then the importance ratio will be 9. So we need to make the update 9 times stronger. That is too much, that is too risky. And we also know that these uh, numbers, percentages, might not be 100% correct. So we don't want to make such huge changes. So we will just clip this number to some safe range. So if it's lower than 0 0.8, it will just be 0 0.8. Or if it's higher than 1.2, it will just become 1.2. And I will show you how to train with GSPL. So you can find URL to this notebook in the description of the video, but this is just Unsloth notebook that I changed. And it's very simple. You take the GRPO notebook by Unsloth and you scroll down, or you can search uh, GRPO, GRPO config. And here in the GRPO config, we just need to add these two lines to activate GSPO. So make sure you have the latest version of this TRL library because that's uh, where it is. And we just need to add this sequence for the important sampling level. And this is optional beta. And now it will use GSPO. To learn more how to use this, refer to the documentation of Unslot. So Unslot. Unslot.ai. So Quen team says that GSPO achieves superior training efficiency and performance compared to GRPO algorithm, notably stabilizes mixture of experts, reinforcement learning training, and has the potential for simplifying the design of reinforcement learning infrastructure. So it also uh, solves some train collapsing problem with uh, GRPO. So you can find the URL to my panel below the video where you can find all of the text as well. Uh, thank you for watching and see you next time.